Welcome to Ogu's Training. Ogu's is an integrated training platform for the oil and gas sector. In this presentation you will get an overview of the basics of oil and gas reservoir and how the subsurface is really like. You will come to know about the process of the origin of oil and gas and different types of rock structure that can act as oil and gas reservoir. You will also come to know about the important parameters like porosity and permeability of a reservoir. When I was visiting Baku in Azerbaijan last year on a holiday, the tour guide showed us the oil field and the oil wells. The oil field in Baku is one of the oldest in the world, where oil was discovered seeping on the surface at least from the 9th century AD. Being an oil and gas professional, I gathered interest and asked him how is the oil stored beneath the surface. He replied that it is stored in large underground reservoirs resembling huge lakes. Even though it seems funny to most of the experienced professionals, in fact it is a very common misperception, many tend to think of the oil reservoir as large subterranean lakes. Quite contrary to this common belief, the oil and gas reservoirs are actually underground rock beds, sometimes at thousands of meters depth. These reservoirs were created millions of years ago when sedimentary deposits along with a lot of microscopic plant and animal organic matters in them got deposited in layers over layers under sea or lakes. Slowly over the years the deposits got compressed due to the weight of more and more deposits on them. Plate tectonic activities moved those sedimentary rocks even deeper under other rock layers. Under intense pressure and geothermal heat, the organic matters decomposed anaerobically into a waxy substance called kerogen, which is nowadays found in various oil shales around the world. This kerogen with more heat got converted into liquid and gaseous hydrocarbons via a process known as catagenesis. The oil and gas thus formed collect, along with water, in the microscopic pore structure of the rock. The rock where the oil and gas is initially formed is called the source rock. After formation the oil and gas migrates through the microscopic pores of the rock layer and end up in the reservoir rock which is another layer of porous sedimentary rock, but is capped by the cap rock, which is a layer of impervious rock, shale, granite, salt etc. through which the oil and gas cannot flow. The cap rock acts like a seal to entrap the oil and gas in the reservoir rock. Due to density difference, the gas tends to accumulate at the top and the water collects at the bottom. The oil tends to collect in the middle. The gas layer at the top is called the gas cap. In many reservoirs, initially there is no gas cap. All the gas remains as a solution with the oil. But as we drill into the reservoir and the reservoir starts producing, that is, we start taking out the oil, the pressure slowly reduces and the gas in the solution is released to form a gas cap. So we see here that to form a reservoir, we need a source rock, a layer of reservoir rock, a app rock, and migration from the source to the reservoir rock. Let us see what type of rock structures lead to the formation of an oil and gas reservoir. A trap is a geological structure affecting the reservoir rock and cap rock of a petroleum system allowing the accumulation of hydrocarbons in a reservoir. Traps can be of two types, stratigraphic or structural. Clockwise from top left, an anticline, the most common type of oil and gas reservoir, is a type of fold that has an arch-like or dome shape, caused by the pushing up of the rock strata due to tectonic activity. If there is a layer of impermeable rock present in this dome shape, then hydrocarbons can accumulate at the crest. So the wells are drilled in the crest of the rock strata. When a fault happens, the layers become misaligned along the fault plane, that is the non-porous rock layer becomes aligned with the porous rock, causing the migration of the oil and gas to stop, resulting into accumulation of oil and gas in the porous rock. Masses of salt are pushed up through sedimentary rocks due to their greater buoyancy, eventually breaking through and rising towards the surface. Salt is impermeable and when it crosses a layer of permeable rock, in which hydrocarbons are migrating, it blocks the pathway in much the same manner as a fault trap. So the wells are drilled on sides of the salt dome. In a stratigraphic trap, variations within the rock strata themselves e.g. A change in the local porosity and permeability of the reservoir rock, a change in the kinds of rocks laid down, or a termination of the reservoir rock play the important role to stop the migration and cause accumulation of oil and gas. Porosity is defined as the ratio of the volume of pores to the volume of bulk rock and is usually expressed as a percentage. A rock has to be porous to be able to store oil and gas in its pores. Permeability is the capacity of a rock layer to transmit water or other fluids, such as oil. The standard unit for permeability is the Darcy D or, more commonly, the milli-Darcy MD. Here in this picture you can see the porosity and permeability to play the important role in oil and gas reservoir. 
A reservoir may contain oil and gas but if the pores are not well connected, or the permeability is low, the oil and gas will not flow through the reservoir and cannot be recovered at surface. Fracking or fracturing the reservoir rock through high-pressure sand and water mixture may play a very important role in the production of oil and gas from such reservoirs. Relative permeability is a dimensionless ratio that reflects the capability of oil, water, or gas to move through a formation compared with that of a single phase fluid, commonly water. In our next video we will discuss about wells, their types, operation, and safety systems in place. We hope you liked this video, do leave your comments and subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos.